We invite our dear friend Jordi Palet, who will present it, and we remind you that the author has 10 minutes to uh, for his uh, to present it. Hello. So we are going to fry them either with what kind of oil are we going to use to fry them? We are going to skip them. It's just probably a term used in Argentina, not in Spain. Yeah, of course, the discussion with the rye guy, well, we don't have time for that. So acceptable use policy for the policy list. This is version six. So I'm not even going to include the entire text in my slides. I usually do this or I present it at the end, but I will skip that this time. And as I mentioned the chairs earlier, although I only have 10 minutes, I'm going to do two parts to my presentation, a shorter presentation. So I have time to respond to the impact assessment. I don't have to present it myself and provide the answers myself. So the staff can do it. So without further ado, the proposal seeks to have a acceptable use policy for the policy list, something that we do not have up to now. There is a code of conduct, but it's not necessarily the same. And we will see this in a minute. So what do we want from an um, AUP? In summary, we want to uh, n n have nuisance or activities that really do not meet the objective of the list attacks, electoral propaganda, spam to the members of the mailing list with regards to the elections and so on and so forth. So the code of conduct, LACNIC's code of conduct says something very specific in this regard. When we have mailing lists, they're going to have issues when we have a traditional or additional standards. I will not read it in full, but this is very important. Although the proposal started way before we had the code of ethics in place, the code of ethics says that there is room for this type of AUP. This is relevant in addition because last time that we did not reach consensus, one of the reasons for doing so is that there was already a code of conduct in place. So it contradicts that argument. We all know that in every mailing list that it is very common to have a moderator, for example, that's the same in LACNA with an AUP and not just in this community, but in the other communities as well, not only in our sector, but in others as well. It is something quite reasonable and something we would expect even. What are the changes from version five and six? Well, basically we have very simple changes that try to resolve some of the arguments that had been raised as arguments to object consensus on, versus, on version five. So the first one is that the chairs mentioned that they are declaring consensus not because of honeypots or its implementation, but rather because it was not being accepted by the community, even though, well, for example, honeypots and etc. So as I said before, we have changed these aspects. These objections are not already in place. So there is no implementation, even though the PDP would allow it to do it. It's not a reasonable objection because there are some cases in which there might be operational details that are reasonable or even necessary based on what the community may decide so it would be reasonable to implement them so to avoid that discussion we just dropped it and the second aspect why we did not reach consensus of course what you can see in bold is literally what the chairs said and in blue we have the answer that was provided so the chairs said that in a way the community was wondering whether it is necessary to have an AUP when actually we already have a code of ethics in place. And as I just said, it is clear that the code of ethics is allowing us to do so, even though the proposal was already in place before the code itself. It's true that there were other arguments that say we were wasting time in discussion as to how to manage the list, but the PDP and the mailing list really is managed through the PDP itself. So it's not longer valid or reasonable as an argument against uh, the proposal. So 
this is the first part of my presentation. I have time to spare. So once the staff does their impact assessment, I can come back with further comments. Thank you, Jordi. So Mariela, Mariela Rocha from LACNIC staff will present the impact assessment. Mariela, you have five minutes. Thank you, Ariel. I hope you can all hear me fine. So the author presented a summary of the proposal and we will look at the impact assessment, our comments and recommendations of LACNIC staff with regards to this proposal. Okay, so here it is. The first comment is that it is important to remember, well, before beginning, I, I thought the author was going to present the text of the proposal. So if, uh, if you haven't seen it, please go to the system and the public policy forum because I will mention some of the items of the proposal. So the first comment is that it's important to remember, the, to remind the community that the, uh, that the PPF is used not only for the elections of ASO address council, but the NRO review committee as well. Item 8.1, the author says that only chairs will be able to warn those that do not comply with the AUP and enforce the actions of the non-compliances. We think that this is appropriate because of the following reasons. One, it is impossible to solve cases where the chairs themselves are involved. This might take away time and also it's very complex to make decisions regarding the behavior between two people. With regards to the possibility to make sure that subscriptors read the PDP and the AUP, I mean, what LACNIC can ensure is that the subscription to the list will imply that the AUP is accepted. Another comment concerning the text, it says the messages on the list are stored and the archive or the file might not be modified. We can say that LACNIC authorities might be forced to modify preventively the public file until the most adequate actions are defined or established because of legal hazard. With regards to the temporary moderation of the LACNIC considers that in case of operational risks, authorities may be forced to moderate, of course, they will make the necessary notifications and announcements. Item 8.2C, when it says replies to non-appropriate messages, it's not really clear. We should need, we would need to define what does it mean, non-appropriate messages. Item 8.2D, where they mention different cases that go against the appropriate use of the mailing list. We think that this is a little bit excessive. For example, the self-replies that aim to generate a common practice that might be a little bit, as I said before, a little bit excessive. Those two items in 8.2 might be a little bit too much. Comment eight says, chairs, may determine other facts that are also considered non-acceptable use. LACNIC staff consider that this makes sense if we consider two actions to deal with the non-compliances. One, that they make sense as a warning made by the chairs, and then how we solve the cases or how would an ethics committee solve the cases. With regards to the global participation and the list, and the author says that, I mean, all participants are responsible or accountable to understand, accept, and adapt to the values and the cultural context of the forum and the list. And it's not up to the chairs to have to consider all of the potential cultural changes or nuisance. So these are three recommendations, and I only have a few seconds left. 8.1, it says only the board, the electoral committee, and LACNIC staff make make announcements about the election of the PDP chairs. We suggest that in 
a, a different text. Any process associated to electoral processes where the community are part of the electorate. Remember the first comment I made. And for this same item, we def we recommend defining or setting up an ethics committee for the AUP. Uh, we also suggest that LACNIX ethics committee should be the authority to follow up on these issues until the AUP committee is really established. Item 8.2D should be removed. And finally, the last recommendation is when, when the chairs have to make a decision with regards to AUP non-compliances, they will take into account cultural issues and language uh, barriers. And that text should be reconsidered. If these proposals is accepted, we would need time to develop and implement this measure. And that would be all. Thank you. Jonder Jordi is trying to innovate with this proposal, so we have two minutes for you to reply. I don't know if two minutes will be enough. I thought I had 10 minutes, but I will try to be very quick and very brief. I included only the aspects where I needed to add some comments. In some of these, we are even, I mean, we even agree, so I won't duplicate text. In the first one, of course, we hadn't considered because it had not been brought up in any other impact assessment or the community, the fact that there are other elections. So, of course, that is something, it's a minor change. It's a, just changing the text saying that we can make any announcements about elections that are appropriate to the forum. And it's even shorter than Mariana's suggestion. Item 8.1, if we consider this, it doesn't really make sense because the other RIRs and even the general list, there, you, there are usually two co-chairs. I've in never in 25 years seen the fact that the co-chairs are not compliant with the AUP. And even if there are two, if one is non-compliant, the other one will warn the co-chair. And we also have the code of conduct. We could say the same about how we determine consensus. Two might not be enough. So the comment really doesn't make much sense. In the ITF list, there are two authorities. I, I was there for 12 years, and I was the only active member, really. Uh, point number four, that is correct if the law allows us to take precautionary measures, if they are requested and if they are approved, no problem. But in a generic sense, we might not censor the list. We would be incurring in prior censorship without any legal claims. As to item six, the first paragraph is clearly defining the uh, objective of the list. The first par paragraph in the proposal that says that uh, the final and exclusive aim is such and such and such. I won't read it all. So it's inappropriate to, uh, to include any messages that are not included in the objective. So the definition is there in the first paragraph. Item seven, LACNIC considers that the um, uh, cases mentioned uh, do not uh, harm uh, the uh, good use of the list. I'm not uh, saying that in any cases uh, that you have to punish the uh, least error. Maybe the moderators think that uh, if uh, somebody is uh, uh, sending a message of self-response the first time, he can be told. But if the person persists every time he leaves on weekends, then it's not. it doesn't make sense. Uh, you, you need uh, to uh, uh, give them a message and to lead so that the self-response uh, messages won't uh, be sent. And I think that's all. The automatic response. Well, you, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, but because a slide was missing. Please, be brief. Yes, it's two things. 
the moderators will uh, determine other facts. Uh, it's not the behavior of the PDP in any known uh, circumstances, and the code of conduct has not been accepted by this community. So if we want to reach the situation, the first thing that we have to do is that as the community is sovereign above the uh, a group, uh, first of all, we need to approve the code of conduct as has been done in other RIRs. As to par global participation in the list, I think that the perception of the staff is not right and unacceptable and even discriminatory. You can't ask a native, and I put three examples uh, just at random of Venezuela, Spain, or Uruguay, that certain uh, use of language may um, uh, not be well received by some because it it it's absolutely reasonable that if something uh, bothers someone uh, you can't explain and if necessary you can apologize but not to punish the author you can tell them well from now on please consider that that's not correct and that should be done in the list so that everybody learns about it yes i think it's uh, well understood well Let's start the discussion time. Let's uh, turn the stopwatch on. Remember that to participate, you have uh, the Q&A panel. And those of you who are here in person, uh, log in in Zoom and uh, each question, for each question, you have up to two minutes and the same for each response. So we invite you Lynch already has uh, the clock. Very good. Uh, so, those of you who already know how it goes, so we are going to process together with Janina and Adriana. We are going to uh, uh, process the questions, trying to respect, first of all, the order of arrival, and then trying to listen to as many people as possible. How is How are we doing with the Q&A, Janina? Yes, uh, let me see. We have a question by Ricardo Patara, who says, it's rather a comment. He says, against, there is no need. LACNIC already has a process for dealing with uh, abuse in a much broader way. It has uh, an ethics committee with people of the community. And even, and even if the existing uh, code uh, permits an AUP, it, it's not necessary. There's nothing uh, specific that the code does not cover, and it, it doesn't warrant creating another document. Should I respond to this comment? Yes, Jordi, go ahead. I'll be very short. I've said, well, the code of conduct, in my view, has not been approved by the community that is sovereign vis-a-vis -vis the organization. And therefore, even if I would agree with the code of conduct, but as long as the community is given a chance to go through it and decide. Good. I have no questions, uh, nobody here in person uh, asking any questions, and no questions in Zoom. Oh, there's another in the Q&A, Janina, apparently. It's Fernando Frediani, and it says, uh, it's a comment too. The PDP requires an AUP approved by the community, and uh, the current text, uh, in my view, is reasonable. It gives a possibility to moderators to sanction any breach. I am in favor of this proposal. That would be the last. Jordi. Well, mm, he's supporting me, so there's nothing I need to add. Janina, another one from the Q&A? Yes. I have another comment, again, by Ricardo Patara, who says, although if uh, I'm not wrong, the community participated in the development of the code of conduct, so that argument makes no sense. There's, 
Uh, I participate in the codes of conduct of all the communities in all the RIRs, and in, in some I continue to participate because they are still debating things. I don't remember, and this is what I told the staff, I don't remember having seen that opportunity to participate, and at any rate, things can be improved. I have discovered, because I've been accused uh, uh, on the grounds of the code of uh, conduct, and I have been sanctioned, and in my view, unfairly, and I, I'm going to take this to court, that that code of conduct is absolutely subjective, and as a minimum, you need to give opportunities to the community to uh, revisit it and uh, approve it. So even if there's a code of conduct and we're going to abide by it, I think it should be uh, debated and accepted, by, approved by the community. And I think that the list needs a different AUP. You, Janina, you are the star. Sorry, my I was muted. It's a comment by Carlos Guerra that says, I'm against, there should be rationality in the sanctions. Well, it's precisely, that's what we're looking for, to be rational. Now, with a code of conduct that is over the uh, community's decisions, that doesn't exist. Uh, I have no questions here of uh, the auditorium, Janina. Should we, you continue? Yes, I have a comment by Laura Kaplan that says, Hello, I'd like to remind you that uh, the development of the Code of Conduct, uh, uh, there was a group of the community that participated and uh, reviewed it. Well, a group of the community is not representative unless you um, uh, uh, issue an open call. I, I was, I, I never saw that call. I, I looked for it in videos and presentations, and of course in the mail. Janina. Another comment by Fernando Frediani, who says, I think that we should try to make an attempt to separate LACNIC's bodies from the PDP bodies as much as possible to ensure that the community is subject to an AUP approved by the community. Yes, absolutely, I absolutely agree. That's what we are aiming at. And I have the feeling that the code of conduct was precisely developed on the basis of the AUP uh, discussion. I may be wrong, but it's the AUP is much, much uh, 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 occurred much earlier than the discussion of the code of conduct. There's a comment here in the room. Please, Oscar, can you get closer to the microphone? I'm Oscar Robles of the staff of LECNIC. The code of conduct was presented to the community in at least, or at least twice. The first draft was defined by the board precisely so that we could uh, have uh, an initial agreement. And then we announced that this working group would be created and we didn't receive any comments or objections. Of course, things can always uh, be improved and the board would like to make some adjustments that we have identified that are required. And precisely because we have gone through this process, we are aware of the complexity of this type of situations that we have to deal with. And I don't think that it should be up to the moderators that are already responsible for too much. And in addition, we can't uh, ask them to evaluate behaviors that uh, are um, uh, go beyond um, uh, our purposes here. So although we agree that everything can be improved, but uh, I, I think that uh, um, holding the moderators accountable for enforcing it, I think it's not uh, uh, proper. So in the meantime, while uh, we, uh, th this should be solved by the ethics committee that is defined by the code of conduct. And uh, finally, when there's consensus by the community, the structure that defined should uh, be in charge. If they define that the moderators will have to do it, then we'll have to emphasize that uh, the moderators will have to devote more time to 
other issues and we'll need to have super heroes because we are speaking of different skills well as i mentioned earlier in all the rest of the communities in the rir in over 300 working groups of ietf it's the moderators that do it and really the workload i've done it for 12 years and it's minimum i only had to deal with two cases a year in the worst case uh, i think that most often it's going to be uh, how things are interpreted because of language or regional things or the impact analysis i think it's much more simple than uh, people think and so i think that we need to give people an opportunity unless it's a uh, horrible if i if um, i um so if i'm using a language that i see uh, that i consider is correct and on top of that i explain why i use it you may i may be told well this is misinterpreted in some countries and if i don't repeat that and i don't get stubborn abusing it because that would be abuse there's no need i i don't have to be punished or sanctioned and that can be defined by the moderators that are reading the list to see the messages that are having to call a committee it takes a, a while to uh, put a committee together i think that uh, the action is much more important and uh, more relevant and in and um, the outcomes are better than if you have to wait for a worse punishment or if you have to create a new body because in the end you we create so many so many bodies that there are no longer any uh, uh, anybody as a, offering as volunteer thank you jordi yes janina we have a last comment of q and a and let me tell you that this will be the last and then we'll go on with the moderators janina it's a comment by Guillermo Pagliero that says, I'm against. I consider that the code of conduct must be the instrument and not the moderators that uh, will always be subjective. Well, yes, we could uh, consider that the consensus decisions could also uh, have a, a subjective load uh, I, it, it's not reasonable to interpret it like that i think it's not even worth repeating everything i've already said because i think that my stance is clear in that regard we have a last comment here in the room well just uh, uh, as a feedback to the author, if you listen to the impact analysis that Mariela mentioned, if the moderators have the role to warn people, there we agree. So based on that, we agree because of the advantages you just mentioned. Now, they shouldn't be the last body deciding what to do. It's too much. Well, I'm absolutely ready to move forward in that regard. Well, now we'll close the discussion not not uh, for the policy but the discussion segment and ariel it's all yours well thank you thank you secretaries remember that if you still would like to say something remember that you have uh, the mailing list and you can send your feedback there now let's uh, god the temperature in the room in a hybrid room you're going to see the first poll if you are logged in if you have logged in here remember it's not actually a poll we are measuring temperature it's uh, by no means does it mean uh, that uh, the what the fate of the proposal will be so you must have already received uh, the poll saying whether you agree, you disagree, or uh, you abstain. So please raise your hands in the people in Montevideo, raise your hands if you agree with the proposal. In favor, in favor, in favor. Raise your hands if you agree with the proposal. Thank you. Please raise your hands in Montevideo, those that are against this proposal.
The rest, remember that you can use the Zoom uh, tool to send uh, your uh, opinion. So raise in Montevideo, raise your hand if you abstain. Thank you. Well, now we'll wrap up the first uh, poll and we're going to receive uh, the results here. So the proposal, LAC 2018-13, version 6, uh, policy of acceptable use of uh, the uh, policy list, AUP, already completed its uh, term. So from now on and, and within two weeks, we the moderators are going to tell the community whether we reached consensus. So we invite you to uh, go on in the discussion in the policy list. Excellent, excellent, Ariel.